Hello. Welcome to the second session of uh, Consumer Choice Theory. My name is Elias. Today, I will take you through the cardinal approach and we will go all the way up to uh, the diminishing marginal utility. We can begin with uh, a brief introduction. So cardinal utility involves measuring utility in units called utils. Now with these units, we will be able to differentiate the utility levels between or among different consumers. Let's suppose that Chewe Makasa derives 30 units from the consumption of Mossy Lager, but derives 10 utils from the consumption of Mirinda. Then Chewe's utility is more in the consumption of Mossy, because we can see that uh, from the consumption of Mossy, Chewe will generate 30 utils, while from the consumption of Mirinda, he will get 10 utils. Comparing the two, we see that uh, Mossy Lager gives him more utility uh, than uh, Mirinda. Okay, so let's uh, look at some assumptions that we make under cardinal approach. The first assumption is the cardinal measurability of utility. So recall we said that under cardinal, we measure utility using units called utils. And this will allow us to make uh, or compare different utility levels among different consumers. The second assumption we make is that utilities between two goods or more are independent. With this, it means that we will be able to add utility levels for a given consumer and come up with a total utility. In other words, if we look at Chewe's uh, case, he, got, he, he had to derive 10 utils from the consumption of Mirinda, but uh, generated 30 utils from the consumption of Mossy. This means that Chewe gets the total utility of 40. Therefore, with this assumption, we can conclude that utilities are additive. The third assumption is that marginal utility of money is constant. Now, the marginal utility of money is simply the additional satisfaction that a consumer gets by spending the last quarter on a given unit. Now, since consumers buy different uh, commodities, it means that the last quarter spent on each commodity must be equal. And the last assumption we make is on introspection. And with this, it means that any given consumer is able to, uh, to know what is happening in the mind of another consumer in terms of their consumption choices. So with this, then it means that uh, consumers will have good information about what other consumers will decide. Okay, so let's uh, build the theory by looking at uh, total utility. So total utility is the total amount of satisfaction derived from the consumption of a single product or a combination of products. Let's take a case of ice cream. Suppose that a consumer had these uh, levels of ice cream consumption with the associated uh, total utilities. You will notice that if no ice cream is consumed, total utility generated will be zero. And if one unit of ice cream is consumed, total utility will be 10. Adding the uh, units of ice cream consumed increases the total utilities but at a diminishing rate. And you'll notice that uh, beyond the 60th unit of ice cream, total utility declines. Therefore, we are seeing that uh, total utility is increasing at a diminishing rate up to a certain point, then starts to decline. Let's look at the graphical representation. So we see that on the vertical axis, we measure total utility in utils, and on the horizontal axis, we measure ice cream consumed. Now, with the figures that we saw uh, in the previous table, we are able to draw a graph that uh, increases uh, to, uh, from some, at some point at a diminishing rate, reaches a maximum, and then starts to decline. So for the first unit of ice cream consumed, total utility generated is 10. And for the second unit of ice cream consumed, total utility is 18. For the third unit of ice cream consumed, total utility is 24. 
for the fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh, uh, we can uh, plot them as well to show how the movement is uh, happening. Therefore, the graph drawn is for total utility. From this, we can look at the marginal utility, which we define as the extra utility a consumer obtains from the consumption of one additional unit of a good or service. In other words, we are measuring the extra satisfaction that a consumer will obtain from consuming an extra unit of a good or service. In measuring this, we use the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. Now, from our previous uh, lessons, we've learned that when we're measuring change, it simply means here we're measuring the total utility two minus total utility one divided by quantity two minus quantity one. This gives us the marginal utility. Now, if we are looking at a function, it means that uh, we need to look at it from the uh, calculus perspective. That means that uh, we will have to get the derivative. That's uh, dTU divided by dQ. This is uh, obtained if you are looking at the utility function. Let's look at uh, the schedule. So recall that uh, the first column is giving us the amount of ice cream consumed per day, and the second column is giving us uh, the total utilities generated. Now, for the first uh, unit of ice cream consumed, we notice that uh, 10 ut uh, utils are generated, and out of this, we get the marginal utility of 10. If we have zero units uh, of ice cream consumed, we, we mentioned that total utility will be zero, and therefore marginal utility will be undefined. For the second unit of ice cream consumed, total utility increases uh, to 18, but the marginal utility uh, reduces to eight. What this means is that uh, we are measuring 18, which is a TU2 minus a 10, which is a TU1 divided by the quantity two, which is Q2 minus uh, one, which is Q1. So here we are measuring uh, the change in total utility divided by the change in the units consumed or quantity. If we solve this, we will end up with a marginal utility level of eight. So if we look at uh, the third unit of ice cream, total utility is 24 and the marginal utility is six. This is obtained by subtracting 24 minus 18 divided by three minus two. For the fourth unit, total utility is 28 and marginal utility is four. And we obtain this four by subtracting 28 minus 24 divided by four minus three. So we do the same for all these uh, units and then we observe that uh, marginal utility will be declining. So we can put this information on a graph. So this is the total utility graph that we saw earlier and associated with it is the marginal utility uh, graph where we measure marginal utility in utils on the vertical axis and along the horizontal we put the units of ice cream consumed. With the figures that we calculated for marginal utility, we are able to see that marginal utility uh, graph is downward sloping. And this is because of the total utility increasing at a diminishing rate. So from here, we see that uh, the first unit of ice cream consumed gives 10 uh, utils for total utility, and the marginal utility is 10. For the second unit of ice cream consumed, the total utility is 18, and therefore the marginal utility is eight. For the third unit consumed, total utility is 24, and the marginal utility is uh, six. For the fourth unit, we see that total utility will be 28. For the fifth unit, total utility will be 30. For the sixth unit, total utility will be 30. And for the seventh unit, total utility will be 28 which shows that beyond the 30th uh, utility level, 
marginal utility will be negative. Given this, then, we can uh, define the law of uh, diminishing marginal utility. But before we do that, let's look at the average utility. So average utility is the satisfaction obtained per unit of a commodity consumed. Now, this is calculated by uh, getting the ratio of total utility to the quantity consumed. Let's look at the schedule. So recall again that uh, the first column is giving us the amount of ice cream consumed per day, and the second column is giving us the total utility levels associated with the consumed quantity of ice cream. Now, since we've said that uh, average utility is simply the ratio of total utility to the quantity consumed, it means we'll be dividing the levels of utility by the ice cream levels consumed. So this means that uh, for zero quantity consumed, the average utility will be zero divided by zero, which will be undefined, and therefore we put a dash. For the first unit of ice cream consumed, we divide the total utility of 10 divided by 1 and obtain the average utility of 10. For the second unit, we divide 18 divided by 2 to get the 9, and then we do the same for all the uh, levels of consumption and end up with the average utility levels that are declining. Therefore, with this, we can then state our law of diminishing marginal utility. So the law of diminishing marginal utility states that as a consumer increases the consumption of a good or service, the marginal utility obtained from each additional unit of the good or service decreases. This means that as you keep on taking in more and more of a unit, the additional satisfaction that you will be getting from that uh, item will be declining. Take the case of uh, drinking water. Suppose you are very thirsty and you wanted to, uh, to drink water. You will notice that uh, the first cup that you take of water, you take it rapid. The second cup, you reduce the pace of drinking the water such that for the last unit you consume, you end up taking in less and less utility levels. So with this then, we wrap up uh, the session that uh, for the law of diminishing marginal utility, the more you take in of a commodity, the lesser the additional utility you will be uh, generating. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next session.